And it was a very hard exam. Those days you still had to draw schematics. But nowadays you don't. And then when I came here in the beginning of 2016, I was not the licensed ham. So I went to visit the local ham, and then I was accosted by the local examiner who spoke Dutch. So now I am a ham myself. I got the basic with honors. The reason why I want you folks to study very hard is get a minimum of 80%, then you may work shortwave. There's a lot of fun in shortwave. Right, so there's rules and regulations for region two. One thing though. We're in region two. That's a great mix. What the matter? What about that? Roughly. Oh, oh there they are. The rules and regulations for Canada, which is in the same region as the United States of America. Who says America is the greatest? We're the biggest. Uh, I'm the biggest. The rules and regulations over here differ from the rules and regulations there. So if you're off the coast of Florida, six miles off the coast of Florida, you're in the same. IARU region, but the rules and regulations are those for the United States of America that you will have to adhere to. That is, one, is also one of the AM questions. You will notice if you browse the exam question pool that everything that we go through is a question somewhere. There's only the three regions. I have not been in one of the other regions yet. I don't intend to go there. I'm perfectly happy in Canada, region three. Thank you, buddy. There are three regions. I've only no. Service. Something that helps. Same thing. Thank goodness. Um, I was afraid someone's going to say that's what you do on a Sunday morning, Pastor. He would have been perfectly right, but amateur radio is the air who he was. He was the king of Spain, Juan Carlos, um, and we call each other by our first name when we become hams. If your captain becomes a ham and you're on the radio with him, you get to call him by your first name. You don't have to say sir. <laughs> okay. We eliminate every, all differences between us, whether it's a head of state or a president or a senator or a king. But the coolest person I ever talked to, and I bet Dwayne knows who this is, was a guy named Joe Walsh. You know who that is? No. You ever heard Hotel California? Oh, yeah. Eagles? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know Sorry, my mind slipped me. I was thinking there? ham, not, not cool music. Oh, well, he is a ham. Yeah, I talked to Joe Walsh. And uh, so this is, this is one of the craziest guys you'll ever see. And you see him perform in Hotel California. He just tears that thing up. So the whole point of this is, is that in ham radio, we want to talk to people around the world. We want to get to know each other. It's very, very international. Uh, you may talk to someone in a language that you know. For those of you who speak Tagalog, uh, one of our best friends is a ham operator here is Jose who is uh, VE5 EDF, who was a ham in uh, the Philippines for over 25 years before he moved here, and now he's a ham here. So uh, it, it's a great equalizer. My son got his license, he is, I think, the third or fourth youngest ever when he was six years old. And he's talking to really important people, and he's a little guy, okay, and calling them by their first name. Okay, so. This is about international goodwill and just having some fun. By the way, just wanted to throw in something Dwayne mentioned. If you get on the internet and you start looking for materials and information on ham radio, it is more or less the same worldwide. We have to make sure that we're Canadian. I'm also a ham in the United States, and I'm also an examiner in the United States. So if by accident you study for an American exam, maybe I can help you. But we'd really for you to have the Canadian exam. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that you're not looking at studying materials for the United States. Okay, let's back to you. 
Thanks very much, Bob. People of very high ranks and very high status, but they will be your equals on the radio. But that's only part of the fun. There's lots of fun in building your own equipment. For that, for building your own transmitters, you have to have the advanced license, which you're not going to get just yet. But I do hope you, want, you will want to. If you want to find out what a ham station looks like, there are people who have wonderful radio stations. And there are people who have... So I want all of you, please, get onto that website. If you are, if you don't have, if you haven't got that paper that I had it out, it is available there, right in the beginning. Memorize the Q code. Memorize. Well, I think all of you know from Alpha down to Zulu. By now, I'm sure. A couple of heads shaking. By next week, you will be able to recite Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Papa, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima. Mike November, Oscar Papa, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra Tango, Uniball, Victor, Whiskey, Extra, Yankee. I'm not It's 26 possible exam questions. Okay? That's the whole thing of all the stuff that I'll be giving you. It's all possible exam questions. If you know it, you know it. So I'm not going to take up much more of your time tonight because I haven't got those books yet. Oh, you so much. only slides. He's on 30 and what we will be doing in the lectures is going through stuff that you don't understand or that you find interesting that you have come across, okay? So know your stuff for the lecture. There we are. Now, tactical radio is, that is radio that's put into a box that you can take along power poles with batteries and everything. This thing goes, you take, if there's a distress situation, that thing gets put into the car and gets taken to where you will be needed. Uh, FT450, yep. Okay, mine is not a D, it's just the FT450. And my, and I have a signaling. Thank you very much. <laughs> no extra charge. Thank you very much. And an extra speaker. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> and I it's called the gold box. <laughs> a gold box as well. They also call that. Uh, top left and bottom right. I have an FT1900. Now, why I said thanks to Bob and to Grant, this is something that you're going to find out over there. How much do those, th those things cost? Um, this guy cost me, this is not my sale by the way, this guy, I had I have a radio just like this, and it had cost me 600 bucks. That one cost, had cost me nothing, that had cost me nothing, that one had cost me 120 bucks if I can remember correctly, and that one had cost me nothing either. You will find that hands are not scrooges. I have some test equipment and stuff that I shall be giving away, handing out, and if someone really wants to give me money, they can give me money, I wouldn't mind, but... <laughs> no, money is not that important. Hammer is far more important. It is my intention that I'm really going to do a lot of begging, I have an idea that my big dust card has been pretty successful. I want each of you to have a radio. One day, I was standing among a bunch of other radio hounds in Bintico, Namibia. And B51 Delta Mike, Derek Moore, a gentleman with longer military experience in radio than I am. 
He said, hi, you are not on the air. Why not? I said, I haven't got a radio. Come here, he said. Hmm. Ah, Kenwood Handy. Ah, nice. Charger. There. <laughs> Speaker mic. There. Here's a piece of three, three, uh, 300 ohm uh, twin line. Make yourself a slim jump. Oh, you need some coax. Coax cable, PL2 phone line. You got a solving line? Yes. Yeah. Fine. You're on the air tonight. <laughs> Was there any work? And I've been operating that way since. If I can get someone on the air, I'll get him on the air. My woodwork teacher was a ham. Mr. Johan Barnab, he said, one Julia Brouwer, and I asked him, I said, sir, why aren't you on the air? He said, well, I haven't got a set. Uh, so that afternoon, I drove off to his house, and I said, okay, sir, there's an XW100. That's a Heathkit radio, and he used it until the day he passed away. So you will find that lots and lots of hams have lots of radio equipment for sale at a very good price, or you get it for free. They'll pass it to you. I won't be giving away that stuff. <laughs> We're also scroungers and squappers, and, and uh, some, some of us use old radio equipment. There's a bumper sticker at a ham meeting one time that said, real radios glow in the dark. So if you want to, you can get some of this old tube stuff. But don't let your cat sleep on top of it, because it'll catch fire. Incidentally, <laughs> 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 my, my station in Simonstown, when I used to live there, that's down in South Africa, comprised an ART-13, which was in the old bombers. B-17, wasn't it? I, no, I started with a B-17 bomber, so. You switch it on, it goes, zoing, yoing, 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 yoing. <laughs> and when the buttons stop turning, that set is true. And my power supply was this big, and it had mercury vapor rectifier tubes. Frankenstein. Frankenstein tubes. <laughs> when I was sending Morse code, I was going, these tubes were going, my dad, who knew nothing of electronics, wasn't interested in either, was watching with rapt attention. That was beauty to him as well. <laughs> so if you like boat anchors, uh, <laughs> come and have a look at my Hammond Road dial, the lovely Hamelin receiver at home. I haven't heard that. The, what I has in the bottom right corner there, he said it cost him $600, mine cost me $2,400. Did you hear that? Did I want it? Hear that? The top left-hand corner, I think, probably cost time between $150 $175. My, the one I have is a dual band. It cost me $400. The power supply in the bottom left corner is very similar to that one. That was $150, and I had to modify it. The signal link is built into my HF radio, and I don't see a key there, but I have a key that costs me quite a bit of money. <laughs> so you can invest a keys. little and enjoy yourself. And as you've had it for a long, long time, you can build yourself up to a very, very nice station. I also have a second call sign, which is my last name, and I had to pay extra to have that. And it's attached to a repeater that's used by the whole community around here, all the hands in the community. It's not on right now because I was modifying it to be connected to another repeater that's in Norfolk which will then connect me to Kenora, uh, Yorkton, and uh, I think uh, another one down in the southeast part of the province. We also have IRLP, which allows us to connect worldwide with that little handheld that I was just showing. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do that's very, very interesting and is very enjoyable. Unfortunately, the IRLP, Internet Repeater Linking Project, I heard from the technical man the other day, mine has now been disconnected because the repeater at Norquay is on IRLP. Apparently, that one has taken over my address. 
1858? I don't know. Can I just say something as well? Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, on uh, radio like this, I've, I've spoken to um, uh, people in uh, New Zealand, and um, I've got a buddy, uh, VE5CAR, uh, out in Theodore, that also uh, talks, uh, connects to the satellites, the space uh, satellites with a little uh, radio like this. So, it's an amazing hobby. Thank you. Then, now oh, that's beauty. That's a boat anchor. Oh, that's fantastic. Take two um, people to take one of those on. At hand meetings, well, flea markets and things, you pick up things like this. Oh, you can buy that from Burr. It's going to cost you, what, 1300 bucks? Or you can buy it in a flea market. How much do you pay for yours? 50 bucks on how to put a new meter and it cost me $40. So, you have a choice. $90 in total, or you pay lots. These things sometimes people just want to throw away and they say, if you come there and say, that's a lovely radio. And you might just hear from the ham, well, see your licensed ham, I think you, it would be a look good, good at your table. Let your mom and dad phone me first. Because I don't want them to say this guy is foisting heavy stuff on your kids. So, uh, <laughs> that's out of the 40s and 50s, isn't it? Yep, probably. One day, I went to ZS1LL. Now, that was Mr. Les Coward. He's, well, he would have been over 100 now. And he told me to bring my car along. I came there and I went home with a car full of radios. And his wife said to me, if my husband weren't here, I'd have kissed you. <laughs> she was so glad that he got rid of a whole storm full of radios. You will find out hams are very generous in this respect. So this is known as boat anchors. There is a more modest setup. It does absolutely everything. And then, of course, sorry. Then we get hams who are really very, very enthusiastic. Oh. Why is that so big? That's not a big one. Well, this guy can do. Now you can see. That's a nice setup. Yeah, that's a beautiful setup, right? That's a big setup. That, that is, is an iambic Morse code key. That's what I have. If you turn it up to that, it's okay. Okay, that's a joke between Bob and I. Morse code gets through where nothing else does. Um, you can, when you, when you get on the website, look about Dits and Dars. There's a story that I'll tell about. Walters Bay Radio, where the ship got his message through in Morse code without a Morse key. Can you send Morse without a Morse code key? Da 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 Which means yes. Y E S. Okay, so this guy, he's definitely got the money. That station is right on the money. Morse code keys can be a left particular one operates an electronic cue which will make the dots and the dashes for you. But Hein here being a shipboard naval operator at one time uses an old fashioned sparking switch. It just goes like this like you see in the old movies. Okay, and he's pretty good at it too. I had very, very good at Go ahead. How big can setups get? As much money as you have. Real estate. <laughs> and I've seen bigger. That's why I said, oh, come on. That's a Toshiba. That's practically my house. 
Uh, right in the top, there's swans and drakes, and there's a yeah, swans drakes. That guy over there. Why do people need such a big setup? They don't. But when this bug bites you, oh boy! You can hams, as I say, like like this guy over here. This is perfectly enough for working the world. It's bigger than mine. Yep. <laughs> now this guy works the world with coffee on his breath. <laughs> and this guy has a problem. Well, the problem that this guy has <laughs> is... Maybe he's got more than one person. He heard this one... Once in a lifetime call sign. What radio is he calling on? <laughs> now what this ham says, oh, okay, what this lady, she's angry. All of the best, old man. I really must sign up. My dinner was ready 15 minutes ago, and if I don't come and get it, my gorgeous, very patient wife, that's what XYL stands for, is going to feed it to the dog. <laughs> that's how you get that. Now, of course, before you can become, you know, you are hams, you're just not licensed yet. There's such a lot of things. After your ham course, apart from the ham course, you also do the Aries, Amateur Radio Emergency Services courses. Uh, if you like Morse, you can learn Morse code. That's also a lot of da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-